James in Toronto writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, I got a whole bunch of new stuff. Kefs, moving coil cartridges, and a new phono stage. All of it sounds wonderful. And the new gear is opening my ears to detail and richness I've never experienced before. Excellent, sir. I'm loving the journey and eventually want to work my way up to some Aspen FR20s or 30s. Yep, I give your calves a run for the money, buddy. <laughs> Once I save enough dough. Okay, all this is to say that my system sounds great when it's loud and sounds pretty good when I have to be considerate to other people in the same living space. I understand the speakers and the components are at their best when they're at ideal levels, which is to say loud <laughs> for the times I need to turn it down, which unfortunately is most of the time. Am I doing any long-term damage to my speakers by listening quietly? Uh, the quick, short answer is no, not at all. In fact, quite the opposite. The only way that you would ever really damage a speaker is by playing it too loud. So, and I doubt that's happening. Most speakers today can output 110, 15, 20 dB without any kind of damage. And the only damage at that kind of level is going to be your ears. So you will damage yourself way before you damage your loudspeakers playing it loudly for, for any quality loudspeaker made. So you, my friend, are fine. One of the things you should maybe uh, think about is figuring out some sort of way, whether it be perhaps a subwoofer, to add in bass that maybe you're lacking when you turn it way down and that may be what you're hearing. We probably have heard of the Fletcher Munson curve which is um, volume related. Our brains when the, when the volume gets kind of low we tend to not hear so much the highs and the lows and it takes a certain amount of volume for those highs and lows psychologically to register in our head. It, they're always there because our systems are flat right but psychologically when it gets too low it kind of rolls off the bottom and the top end which is what we used to have to compensate for that was called loudness controls and that's where we EQ'd up the bottom and the top end so that at low volume levels it sounded the same to our brains as when it was playing loud so you might investigate some of that and while I don't recommend getting a loudness control because now all of a sudden you're going to go into the realm of a cheesy sort of electronics and frankly waste the money that you've invested in this and you are planning on investing in a pair of Aspens, then I would think maybe come up with a sub and you might even kick that sub in the butt a little bit because it's the low frequencies that really bother us when we play it at low. It's, that's the part that just makes everything sound lifeless and thin. So you could cheat, turn the woofer up a little bit. Anyway, just an idea. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.